All right, folks, we're in, in the future, and our next speaker will continue that theme. Uh, just until a few, a couple years ago, I guess it was a small, very small startup, and now it's actually growing nicely. Uh, and uh, I'd like to welcome to the stage and have your applause for Brian Mullins from Dacry. Hi, I'm uh, Brian Mullins, uh, the founder and CEO of Daiquiri, and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, wait, are both of these on? Huh. How about that? Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the future of AR and understanding the future of AR. Um, I'll talk about some of the stuff that we're doing today, um, where we've come from and where we're going, and hopefully show you some cool new technologies. So. Um, one of the questions that I think that we need to ask ourselves is, what's more real? Is, is the idea or is the manif manifestation of that idea more real? And the, the reason I ask that is um, Plato, who's a, uh, a famous Greek philosopher, had this theory. And in his theory, oh, his slides automatically advanced. Um, excuse me. Sorry. Um, in his theory, he thought that the idea of, oh well. <laughs> and one more time. All right, so this is important because uh, what Plato said was he thought that the idea was the only thing that was real. Um, this table was just a facsimile of that idea. And we think that's important because you know, what we're doing with AR fundamentally we think is the same thing as whether I build that table, whether I 3D print that table, um, or whether I render that table in augmented reality. We think they have the same, um, same amount of importance, and, and it's, it's uh, important to think of that when you think about what you're going to do with augmented reality and, and really what, what the medium of augmented reality really is. Um, you know, so while things like tracking technology are important, um, we focus on experience tools and the, the, the tools that help us to manifest those ideas into reality. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think it's important to note that tracking plays an important role in it, um, but you don't need a smartphone even to create the illusion of augmented reality. Um, if I were to just put something onto a page, and, and show that to a user and, and give them the novelty of, of creating augmented reality, um, I could do that with just a sheet of paper. And, and I think that's important to, to recognize that you know, that's a novelty. Um, and with all the technology in the world and the most sophisticated devices, if we do something that's just a novelty, it won't stick. And this is a nod to one of the earliest films ever made. And people would go see those films because they didn't have a concept in their brain of what a motion picture was. Um, and, and it was really exciting, but, but you don't go back to that. It, it's a gimmick. And it's important to remember that some of the things that we do in augmented reality, while interesting the first time, are also just gimmicks. And we have to move beyond the gimmicks, and we have to understand what, what becomes valuable, and, and what becomes valuable, and what users want to engage with. We're starting to do more and more of that. And at Daiquiri, over the last year, we've done our, our technology has been used to power about 1,000 campaigns through our white label partners. We've had millions of engagements um, on, on even uh, individual campaigns, which is really exciting. And we've started to understand what people are doing with augmented reality and what's valuable to them. And so what we've done is we've created uh, a technology we call Enchantium that's specifically for rethinking augmented reality um, and play, and, and putting augmented reality and making it easy to put augmented reality into toys. And what we've done is we've created a set of toys to demonstrate what can be done. And this is one of our favorites. We'd love for you to come to the booth and, booth and check it out. Um, and what it is, it's a set of blocks that are, are laser engra engraved wood. And um, the augmented reality actually represents um, the, the visual nature of the element from the periodic table um, of, of a particular block, so you can see it visually. But what's more interesting is, is when you get multiples 
and you put them together, they can interact. And we think that this type of interaction and, and the physicality and, and the connection that the user has with it is, is one of those things that's important um, and one of the things that we're trying to understand. We've also created another set uh, um, of, of additional toys. And again, you can see them all in our booth. And um, it's all about interaction. It's about the physical mixing with the virtual. It's, it's about you know, showing the physics and, and what they would be like on the scale of the real objects, connecting people's minds to these, to these experiences, um, letting people see things in entirely new ways. So we're really excited about Enchantium, but that's kind of what we're doing today. And this is about what the future of AR is. A lot of people think that head-mounted displays are the future of AR. And I, I think that they play a huge part in it. But I don't think seeing um, is, is the future of AR. I think, I think we have to, to think about what it might be. Now, um, Google Glass is a very interesting device. Um, and it's inspired other manufacturers to make some other very interesting devices. Um, when consumers get uh, head-mounted displays in their hands, it'll actually let them have these experiences hands-free and uh, more time every day. So it'll be great for the industry. But, but it's not quite what we're looking for. So we started to think about it, sort of think, what's the future of AR? And uh, that's when it occurred to us. Maybe thinking is the future of AR. And so we started to do a few experiments and see what you could do with thought and AR. And this is a little game that we put together. And today, Enchantium supports the MindWave mobile to actually use EEG technology to measure the thoughts in a user. And then we've manifested the intensity of thought in augmented reality to manipulate the augmented reality objects. She's moving that with her mind. And we think that, that that's a really fundamental thing, is, is the idea of getting somebody's mind involved and connecting it with what they're seeing in augmented reality. So that's kind of understanding concentration. And that led us to the next question. Well, what else could you do with it? And so we took the same EEG technology, and we mixed it with object recognition. And now that, that same user can point the device at an object to select it. And then the EEG measures the thought and concentration level and detects the intent. And the user actually selects the, the light and then turns it on again with her mind. <laughs> One more time. There's the EEG. You focus. If you look real close, you'll see the reticle when the, the tracking identifies the, the light. And as soon as she thinks hard enough, the light turns on. So obviously, very interesting understanding intent and, and understanding what you might be able to do with that information in augmented reality. But we thought we'd ask one more question. What else could you do with that? And so we took a 16-channel EEG, which takes about 30 minutes just to put on, and you got to wet all the electrodes. So it's kind of a time investment. And then we took that same user and had her train patterns by thinking about a subset of items. And once the system recognized what each pattern was associated with the trained objects, you could then measure the, pattern, the waveform and detect what they were thinking about and then make it appear in augmented reality. So you'll see here, there's the waveform. She thinks about a sheep. Don't ask me why it's a sheep. And then the sheep manifests itself in AR. So what we've done is taken the concept from her brain and represented it in augmented reality. Again, you'll see another pattern. Um, this one's for the UFO. And there appears the UFO in augmented reality. So with this, we think that it's understanding ideas. And at Daiquiri, we think that understanding is the future of augmented reality. Thank you very much.
Thanks, Brian. That was kaboom. Any questions for Brian? The whole slide will be on SlideShare, and it'll be point two from our blog. Also, you can come try on the EEG in our booth and control augmented reality with your mind. Plus, all the sessions here are videotaped, and it will be uploaded to YouTube in the next few days. So you can also see it there. Awesome. Other questions? Uh, yes? I, I think absolutely, and, and I started to talk. The question, please. Yeah, I, the question was, do I think that the next step is to kind of manifest dreams, uh, anything that you can imagine? And I, I started to talk talking about Plato's idea of forms, and, and I think he was really smart, and I think he was onto something, but I think he was wrong. I don't think the idea is more important than the physical thing. I think they're, they're equally as important. Um, and if we can tap into them, and, and we've already started to show that you can, and there's a, a wealth of research um, in, in the field of, of brain-computer interfaces, um, then I, I do believe that we can tap into those thoughts and using augmented reality technology manifest them and, and make the closest thing to, you know, y y if you can think it, it can be real. Um, and, and what we're doing in the future is trying to develop technologies that reduce the friction from idea to manifestation. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much. Uh, oh, there was a hand up over, okay, over here, question. too. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. I, I think repeat, that repeat the, question. The, the question was, thank you, Ari. Um, the question was, uh, what do you think that the time frame for commercialization of technology like this is? Um, it, it definitely has a slightly longer implementation horizon, um, I think, from a consumer standpoint. So you know, in, in Enchantium, we're going to make that available. If you, if you have a mind wave, you can use these dry cell technologies. They're easier to put on. And, and they measure a certain um, you know, simpler subset of the waveforms. Um, I think that the, the more elaborate um, EEGs that require a lot of setup um, require some advancement in the electrode technology and the sensing technology um, before it'll really be practical for the consumers. However, I, I think that there's some really interesting applications in the industrial space, which is one of our fastest growing vertical segments for augmented reality, um, to use the dry cell kind of measurement of of conscious intent and concentration um, on, on, you know, in factory floor and industrial environments today. You saw the example of turning the light switch on, um, but it, it can certainly be used, you know, in conjunction with augmented reality technologies, identifying an object or identifying, uh, you know, part of a work process, and then maybe measuring the level of concentration and deciding if you need to prompt that worker to pay a little bit closer attention. Um, or, or you know, acknowledging that you know they're giving it their all and, and that things are okay to proceed. So, so I think that there's there's kind of some stepping stone applications for it today. Um, you know, the if you if you try out the EEGs in the booth, you'll see how small the form factor is, and it's very encouraging that you could mix something like that with a head-mounted display, um, both in an industrial application and and ultimately, hopefully, in consumer applications. So. All right. Thanks, Brian. All right, thank you.